All righty. When we do get going, um, I'll, I will be reading a document to you, and then uh, we'll talk with Mr. Houseel and then have him give your his advice. Okay. She will be logged in momentarily, Your Honor. All right. All right, we are on the record in the people of the state of Michigan versus Scott Lewis Eubank. This is file 210786FY. Council, identify yourselves for the record, please. Hey, I do so on behalf of the people. Stephen House, on behalf of Mr. Eubank for the limited purpose of his arraignment. All right, so Mr. House, may I address your client to explain the process and read the charge or charges? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Eubank, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Your attorney, Mr. Houseel, said limited purpose. He's here just today, just to help you through this. After today, if you want to have a lawyer represent you, you either have to request a court-appointed attorney or hire your own attorney. We're going to talk about that. So the process today, I'm going to read to you the charges and the maximum penalties. Then I'm going to ask you if you understand it. After you've told me you understand the charges, then I'll ask your lawyer how you should plead. Probably not guilty, almost always is, and maybe stand mute. Then we're going to talk about bond, and we're going to talk about it. Okay? okay? So I'm going to go ahead and show you on the computer copy of the document. The document that you're charged with is called a complaint, and this is the document. Can you see it? Yes, sir. All right, let me scroll down to see if how many charges there are. It looks like this is page two. It looks like there's only one page, and it looks like there's two charges. So the prosecuting attorney's office is charged you in this case with two crimes, one felony and one misdemeanor. The reason why you're charged is that it's alleged on or about June 7th of this year at an address at 5106 Tucker Street in the city and county of Midland. They're alleging in count one that you made an assault upon Megan Weaver with a dangerous weapon, which was a knife. They do not think you were intending to commit the crime of murder or to inflict great bodily harm less than the crime of murder. However, they do think that it was an assault with a dangerous weapon. If you're convicted of this crime, it has the felony. The maximum penalty for this felony is up to four years in prison and or $2,000 in fines plus court costs. 
and DNA, it must be taken upon arrest. Consecutive sentencing may take place if under MCL 75506A, if the assault took place in a place of confinement. Count two, you're charged with domestic violence, second offense. This is a misdemeanor. It usually is a 93-day misdemeanor, but when you have a prior conviction, then it is enhanced. So this is the pen maximum penalty for this misdemeanor. It is alleged on the same date and location that you made an assault or assault and battery upon Megan Weaver, an individual with whom you've had a child in common and or a resident, or former resident of your household, and that they're alleging that you were convicted at least once before on January 28, 2015 here in Midland County for a prior domestic violence charge. That makes this domestic violence second offense. If it were first offense, it would be 93-day misdemeanor, but because of a second offense, if you're convicted of this crime as a second offender, it would be up to a year in jail and or $1,000 in fines plus court costs. Consecutive sentencing may be imposed if the arrest, if the assault, I'm sorry, was in a place of confinement. So one felony, one misdemeanor. Do you understand the two charges and the maximum penalties that I've just read? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Houseel, do you have advice for Mr. Eubanks as to how he should plead? Mr. Eubank enters a plea of not guilty and intends to hire his own attorney. Okay, Mr. Eubanks, we're gonna talk about that, then we'll need to go to bond. The next two dates, in a felony case, we have a planning date and then we have a hearing date. And we set those on Tuesdays. The next time that you will be in court will be by Zoom, not in person. And that's a planning date. That's called a probable cause conference. That's gonna be at one o'clock on Tuesday, June 22nd. So Tuesday, June 22nd at one o'clock will be the probable cause conference. Any attorney you hired, you're gonna to need to know that and just call the PCC. That's what we call it. That's what they know to be called. If you go to hire an attorney and they do not know what a PCC is, then you should turn around, go out the door, <laughs> find somebody else who does know what that is. All right. Your preliminary examination is scheduled for June 29th, also a Tuesday. It's the following Tuesday at 2.15. That may or may not go on that day. That's between you and your lawyer as to what you decide to do. You understand? Yes, sir. All right. You're planning on hiring your own attorney. Is that correct? All right. I have an attorney. I need to talk to him and see if he can help me or not. Okay. If you decide or can't hire an attorney, you can always request a court appointed attorney. So you'll need to fill out some paperwork because we have to see if you qualify financially. So if those, for whatever reason, if that does not work out, you need to let us know because the faster you have an attorney, the faster they can get the police report, then they can be prepared for these dates. Because even though they seem like they're a long ways off, they come pretty fast when you're preparing for court. Okay. All right, yes, so sir. now we need to address the issue of bond. Mr. Alcio, would you like to make your argument for bond, sir? Mr. Eubank has some financial obligations, which he's meeting. He pays child support on two different children. Although right now, currently being unemployed, he has no direct income. Um, he does uh, you know, have no reason to suspect he won't be here for when he's supposed to be here. And even though he does have the one prior a domestic violence conviction of six years ago. There's nothing here which would indicate he's any uh, threat to the uh, community or uh, risk of failing to appear for any uh, kind of proceedings within the court. Well, I have not had an opportunity to review the police report. I uh, believe that the altercation started as you know an argument while Mr. Eubank was preparing dinner for the couple, which is why there was a knife present and uh, the knife itself was uh, part of preparing dinner and so with the uh, yelling and screaming, it may have gotten uh, waved around, but it was not uh, used in any means as a, as a weapon or a threat. And I uh, do not think he poses a threat to uh, the, the community and ask them or take that into consideration when setting the appropriate bond for Mr. Eubank. Thank you. Let's do so. Argument regarding bond. Uh, Your Honor, obviously, uh, you know, these, these are assaultive charges. He has the prior offense, um, but not a whole lot outside of that. Uh, so we would just ask the court to take into consideration uh, all the normal things. If he is to get out, we'd ask that he not have any contact with the victim or go to the victim's address, uh, that he not have any assaultive behavior, uh, comply with pretrial services, fairly standard terms. Okay, thank you. 
The, I was not the magistrate who reviewed the case. The magistrate who reviewed the case had set an initial bond at $25,000 cash or surety. Um, court rule 6106F1 says I need to take a look at the defense prior criminal history and look at other factors such as to help me determine whether or not two things. Will the defendant show and will he be a threat to the public uh, if he's released? And is there anything that I can do to mitigate that risk? or increase the odds for him coming to court. Here, uh, the charge is uh, significant. It's for your felony, maximum penalty. The defendant does have limited criminal history, but it does have domestic violence. He does have domestic violence 2015. It looks like he had an operating while intoxicated in Texas in 2004. In this case, the defendant uh, met with the circuit court pretrial service coordinator, um, Ms. Rebecca Holm, she did an initial assessment of him and did not recommend a PR bond. She had indicated that after she met with the defendant on June 8th, that he has lived in his current residence for one year. The defendant resides with his girlfriend, her three children, his two children, 12, nine, and their two-year-old together. Um, that he's currently unemployed. She had run a praxis objective risk assessment and praxis scoring. The defendant was released from jail with a cash surety intermediate pretrial service supervision of two contacts per month. That if uh, so, as I look at the charges and I do have a copy of the initial uh, affidavit, the defendant, when questioned by the police, said that when he was questioned, the defendant allegedly said, she's been accusing me, meaning the victim in this case, of taking her uh, debit card or EBT card, which I did to buy chicken for dinner, the card to buy food for the family. He admitted there's been tension in the home for a while and that he and Megan have been arguing often. He says, I still love her, but I can't do this anymore. She's constantly at me. Scott said, I turned around with the knife in hand and told her to get the fuck out. I tell her this all the time. Scott admitted his relationship problems and very toxic impact on everyone and that the home was very dysfunctional. Well, depends on the circumstances that were put in place, having a knife in a close proximity, telling someone to get out and doing it all the time is something that's not healthy and is not one that uh, and could be potentially testimony or evidence against himself in any uh, criminal trials. So evidence presumption is fairly high. In this case, their praxis because of his prior convictions, the charges, and other factors uh, determined that a PR bond is not. The magistrate who reviewed the case said $25,000 cash or surety bond. I, that at this time, it will be the bond in this court that the defendant will have a $25,000 cash or surety. He uh, may not use alcohol, may not use any illicit or any controlled substances. He must participate in substance abuse, alcohol testing or monitoring. He has to continue to seek or maintain employment. He is not to have contact with the victim. So he has to have some other place that he's going to live, that be directly or indirectly. He has to have at least two contacts per month and a court reminder notification. If he is unable to make bond, he must participate in the PA 511 men's cognitive behavior group classes. If he does post the bond, then he is to schedule a biopsychosocial assessment at JNA and follow all the treatment recommendations, and that the defendant also be placed on a random drug screening and testing program. We'll be adjourned on the case at this time until the pre probable cause conference on June 22nd at 1 o'clock. Thank you very much. We're all set. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Sir, you can sit up in the brown chair, please. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. Could you tell me your name, please? Uh, William Scott Benchley. We are on the record of the people of the state of Michigan versus William Scott Benchley. This is file 210788SM. Counsel, identify yourselves for the record, please. Yeah, do so on behalf of the people. Good house you on behalf of Mr. Benchley for the limited purpose of his arraignment. All right, Mr. Benchley, um, 
certain that Mr. House Seal did his usual good work and told you how the process works. You probably were you sitting in the room when I was doing this arraignment with the last gentleman? Yes, I was. Okay. The process could be very similar to yours. The charges will be slightly different, but the process will be the same. So what I'm going to do is read you the charge or charges against you. There looks to be one charge that's been filed. It is alleged here in this case that uh, the prosecutor is indicating that you have on or about June 7th of this year at an address on West School Road in Greendale Township, Midland County, Michigan, made an assault or assault and battery upon a Hunter Donnelly, a resident or former resident of your household. If you're convicted of this crime, typically it's a 93 day misdemeanor maximum penalty of $500, but because of a prior conviction on June 26th of 2000 here in Midland County, it's enhanced to a domestic violence second offense that makes it a maximum penalty of up to a year and or $1,000 in fines plus court costs. Consecutive sentencing may be imposed under this statute, but it, consecutive has to have something to be consecutive to. So you only have one charge. There's no way to make it consecutive because there's no two charges that you have to interact with. Do you understand the charge and the maximum penalty that I just read to you? Yeah. All right, Mr. Houseel, how do you advise your client to plead? Mr. Benchley enters a plea of not guilty and requests a court appointed attorney. All right, Mr. Benchley, uh, I will enter a not guilty plea for you. We have to talk about we have to talk about your financial situation here real quick. Let me just put in your number. Uh, there's a form that I'm going to show you. I'm not just making this information up here. So I just want you to see where I'm getting the information from. I need to find out about your financial situation to see if you qualify. Do you see the form? It should be up in front of you right now. Yeah. All right. I show your address at 5735 West School Road in Mount Pleasant. Is that a valid address? Yes. Renting, buying, or do you, uh, the place or you uh, live with somebody else? I own it. You own it outright. You don't owe any money to any banks. Yeah, I, I have a mortgage on it. Okay. How much is your mortgage approximately per month? Remember, we're trying to determine if you have enough money to hire an attorney. So we want to see what you have outflow in income. It's about uh, 700 a month. Okay. Are you currently employed? No. How do you receive income? Uh, I've been basically draining my accounts to live on, uh, trying to get unemployment and, uh, they've certified for like 14 weeks and still haven't gotten anything from them. What do you do for um, a living? Normally I'm, I'm, uh, an operator for, uh, local 324 operating engineers. So they took, but, uh, there has not no work. They haven't called me yet. I've been staying current on the out of work list and so far haven't had much luck. All right. Single, married, divorced or separated? Uh, divorced. Any minor children you're paying child support for? Yeah, one. How much you paying in child support? Uh, it's like, it's like 200 and something a week. Well, you are draining your income quickly if you're paying 800 a month uh, there and um, 700 for mortgage. All right, I, I'm going to go ahead and appoint an attorney uh, to represent you. Where your next pretrial date is going to be June 29th at nine o'clock. Now we need to address the issue of bond, Mr. Halseal. Yes, Your Honor. There's no reason to suspect that uh, Mr. Benchley will not appear. I think it's uh, expected that he will, especially being uh, rooted in the community and owning a home here. And his last interaction with the judicial system appears to be 21 years ago. Even though that was a domestic violence conviction, it certainly doesn't indicate that he is any type of threat to the community or specifically anyone else. Is this, this 
incident, uh, the best of my understanding, is that uh, there was no medical attention required by anyone or any noticeable serious injuries. And of course, there's the usual disagreement of some stories there. So uh, given those things and with the appropriate conditions on bond, I just uh, request that the court take those things into consideration when setting the bond. Thank you. Okay. Uh do so any comment regarding bond your honor we would just again ask that if he if he is granted a bond uh, there not be any contact between him and the victim at this point um i believe they were living in the same household uh, additionally just compliance with pretrial services no assault behavior all right um mr benchley help me out with regarding the person who uh this hunter donnelly can you can you remind me of the relationship you have with him? Uh, it's my girlfriend's son. Okay. How old is he? And I think he's 21, 22. Does he live uh, at he had the made address? Does he, he has been. Ad okay. I'm going to order no contact between the two of you. So if he's there, you cannot be. So okay. uh, here's what I'm going to do. I think uh, you have no prior criminal history except for the one incident, uh, which was actually a deferred case you're currently unemployed or uh, out of work i'm going to set a pr bond i mean you don't have to pay any money but i uh, i do want to have you engage in some pretrial services so i want you to meet with my probation staff they are not going to ask you any questions about the facts of the case you should only talk to your lawyer about the facts of the case they may try to determine as to what caused this uh you know whether or not this is a you were intoxicated at the time, or you're just frustrated. Maybe you have, need some anger management. I, I don't know what they're going to recommend, but they're going to chat with you. Just try to see what we can do to make sure you don't get in one of these incidences in the near future. You had a pretty good run, 20 years, pretty good run for regarding being an interacting with the law, but something happened. So uh, I, I do want you to meet with the pretrial services coordinator, and follow whatever the recommendation is uh, regarding that. Is there any indication, Ms. Dusa, that there was alcohol or any substances that were used in this incident that you recall? I don't believe so, Your Honor. I, they were in a vehicle at the time, um, but I, I don't believe that there was alcohol being used. It shouldn't have been, at least okay. in the vehicle. Okay. Uh, so we're going to need to have a telephone number or an email that my staff can get in touch with you. Plus, uh, on, May, on June 29th, it's going to be by Zoom. So you're going to have to figure out a way to connect up electronically. Is there a telephone number? Uh, yeah, I've got a cell phone at my my house. Um, it's uh, 989-317-6612. Okay. Do you happen to have an email address or no? Uh, it's uh, billbenchley.wb at gmail.com. Billbenchley.wb at gmail.com. Yes, sir. Okay. With a name like Bill and William and Benchley, you probably had to keep getting combinations so you got one that wasn't used, I suspect. Yeah, it was okay. it was a bugger. Yep. We'll send we'll send you a notification to that email address to give you the insight. Um, there's no contact with the victim, so I know he's of age to have his own place, but obviously I'm not gonna make the victim move out. If he's there, you can't be there. If he's not there, you can be. You just can't have contact with him. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah, before All right. We'll I left, until he was taking yeah, off his mother. Left. Yeah, she told me that he was planning on moving out. So I, I'm assuming that he's not going to be there. Well, if you find out it's a surprise, you're going to have to find some place to stay for a bit. Right. I gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. So let's let's do that. And then uh, my probation staff will get in touch with you. Again, you're not on probation. You're still presumed innocent until proven guilty. We just want to make sure if there's any parameters we have put in place, we want to make sure we do. Okay. Sure. Do, on June 29th, though, uh, you do not have to call in. You just have to be in touch with your attorney. They'll tell you what's going on after June 29th. I just want to let you know the dates. Okay. So the, uh, they'll give me something in the mail as to who I contact them? Yes, they will. Uh, okay? Okay. All right. We're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Burton. We just have one more here. Yeah. 
while we're waiting for Ms. Peck, I guess we can do uh, Mr. Sure. Cook's case. Yeah. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Are you related to Roy? Roy Burton. No. We are on the record in the people of the state of Michigan. Uh, Mr. Alstu, we're going to go ahead and do, uh, Mr. Burton has a person here who's going to do a waiver on, I believe. Uh, okay. I don't see the case was added to the calendar. I need Mr. Cook's um, case number. 210628 FY, Your Honor. All right. Uh, on the record of the people, State of Michigan versus Edward Brian Cook, file 210628 FY. Counsel, identify yourselves for the record. Hey, I do so on behalf of the people. Leland Burton for Mr. Cook. All right. Today, there was a bench warrant issued because of the probable cause conference. Uh, Mr. Burton had anticipated his client being there. Some mix up. I think Mr. Cook had trouble logging on or getting connected up with Zoom. Um, my understanding is that he's got a lot of people looking out for him. So everybody got in touch with Mr. Cook telling him he missed his date. I can't do Zoom. You told me it's how to okay. do that. I don't know. You're, you're here now, though. So, uh, Mr. Burton, what's uh, your client's intentions regarding the preliminary examination? I'd recommend we waive the preliminary examination. There's an offer for 7411 in the file. Okay. And to be real candid, I know that Mr. Cook's been doing pre-trial. Your Honor, can I have Mr. Burton speak up a little? You don't mind. Um, where were we? Um, you said he's never been doing, he's been doing pretrial services. He's doing pretrial because Becky Holm has been reaching out um, and, and keeping me informed as to Mr. Cook's progress. The date that he didn't appear by Zoom, he was actually with Ms. Holm, which is why I thought going forward we would have in-person proceedings, uh, particularly given that the pandemic itself is winding up and any risk associated with coronavirus is being markedly reduced. And Mr. Cook um, reminds me of my dad, actually. Um, must be a nice guy. He was. <laughs> <laughs> There's some some people. I mean, technology sometimes outstrips us, and uh, quite frankly, he's been. When I talked to him on the phone, I got a hold of him right away. Mr. Cook talked to me, so he's been only can use. All right, let's do so. The people waive the right to preliminary examination. Yes, your honor. All right, Mr. Cook, your lawyer is recommending you waive this step. Get to circuit court. He's already got some plans for how the case is going to go, but it can't be done here. So your lawyer says, waive the preliminary examination, get the case up to the right judge, which is either Judge Karras or Judge Beal. He thinks it's a good idea for you. Uh, the 7411 is a tool that says you can take responsibility and if you're successful, then it doesn't end up being a conviction. Does that mean I can walk out of here today? Well, you're walking out I'm of here. Game. You're walking out of here today. <laughs> I'm game judge. <laughs> you're, you're walking out of here either way, but we just needed to make sure okay. that you waive. So yeah. you plan on following your lawyer's advice? What's that mean? We're just quickening it up or uh, I mean, yeah, I don't even, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hold that. Hang yeah. on. He says that I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Let me, all right, your lawyer recommends you do this. Are you planning on following your lawyer's advice? Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to make sure, determination that the waiver's been made knowingly, understandably, voluntarily, and accurately, and this case is now bound over to circuit court. Mr. Burton, is your client familiar with the charges and the maximum penalty, or do you need me to read the charge to it? We would waive the reading of the information. He's familiar. I would ask that you enter a not guilty plea on his behalf. Not guilty plea will be entered in the records of this court. Ms. so any reason we need to change the bond? No, Your Honor. Any reason we need to change the bond, Mr. Burton? No, Your Honor. Thank all you, right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Cook, you're free to go. Thank you. We're all set. Your Honor, right. just for clarification on our end, are we reinstating the previous bond? Recall yes. Reinstating previous bond, recalling the bench warrant. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We're all set. Hey, thanks, Judge. Yeah. Now we're calling case of the People State of Michigan versus Elise, or current Elise Peck, file 210787SM. Counsel, identify yourselves for the record. I'll tell you, do so on behalf of the people. Stephen House, on behalf of Ms. Peck, for the limited purpose of her arraignment. Okay, may I address your client? Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Ms. Peck. Good afternoon. Mr. Houseel said it's a limited a pur uh, purpose. That just means he's here today to help you. If you want to have a lawyer after today's date, you would either have to hire one or request an, an attorney. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand. Okay. I am going to go ahead and read you the charge or charges. I'll show you on the computer screen what it looks like. We're going to talk about these charges, then we're going to talk about bond, and we're going to talk about an attorney. So in this case, ma'am, you're charged with domestic violence. You're charged with this crime because the prosecutor is alleging that on or about June 8th of this year at an address at 1274 East Prairie Road, the Homer, Ta Homer Township, Midland, Michigan, that you made an assault or assault and battery upon a person by the name of James Mitchell 
an individual with whom you've had a dating relationship. If you're convicted of this crime, it's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and or $500 in fines plus court costs. Do you understand the charge and the maximum penalty that I've just read to you? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Houseel, how, how do you uh, recommend your client plead? Ms. Peck pleads not guilty and requests a court-appointed attorney. All right, Ms. Beck, I need to ask you a few questions then regarding your financial situation. The address I have for you is 2606 Abbott Road, uh, apartment eight in Midland, Michigan. Is that a valid address? Uh, apartment D8, D as in dog, but yes. D8, and I, I presume yes. it's a place you're renting, is that correct? Yes. All right, uh, are you single, married, divorced, or separated? I'm, I'm single. Do you have any minor children? No, I do not. Are you working? Yes, I work full time at Yaya's. <clears throat> and how much do you make per hour? I make 13 an hour. How many hours a week? You said full time, so 40 hours? Uh, approximately, yes. Sometimes around 30, depending on the week. Um, do you receive any type of assistance? Food stamps, Social Security, disability, um, insurance? Um, I will be receiving Medicaid soon, as it's going to be effective as, as of July 1st. All right, I'll go ahead and appoint an attorney then to represent you in this case. Your next pretrial okay. is going to be June 29th at 9 o'clock. You do not have to be here for that. Um, your attorney will be in contact with you. However, we're going to have to uh, gather your information, uh, telephone number and whatnot uh, regarding that. Um, let's go ahead and talk about bond. Mr. Houseel, you make an argument regarding bond? Yes, Your Honor. Apparently this incident occurred at the boyfriend at the time, boyfriend James Mitchell's uh, home or, or apartment. Uh, they do not live together. They each maintain their own households. And uh, the altercation uh, happened there. Apparently, and I think if you look at uh, Ms. Peck, you can see she has two black eyes and bruising on her arms. So there was some degree of mutuality in the fracas that took place. And perhaps she lost the coin toss over who gets to go to jail. Um, in any event, as, uh, this is her first interaction with the judicial system, my understanding. Uh, she has no prior uh, interactions at all, no criminal history. Uh, and considering all the aspects of this incident as the court considers bond uh, a condition of the bond may be uh, appropriate here that there be some alcohol counseling or alcohol services involved as i believe that was a significant factor in both parties involvement uh, in this event uh, thank you all right let's do so any input regarding bond uh, your honor i would agree i i don't have a problem with the your bond for Ms. Peck, I, I anticipate there being a spouse abuse deferral offer in this case. Uh, however, I would note that there definitely was alcohol involved. Both parties had been drinking. Um, as to Ms. Peck's injuries, I would just note that she indicated to the officers that her injuries were from being drunk and falling down the stairs earlier in the night prior to the argument and that uh, the victim in this case would never hit her. So. Obviously, uh, you know, we don't, we weren't there. We don't know what really happened, but um, that, that was her explanation okay. for her injuries at that point. All right, I got most of that. Uh, you tend to be going in and out, but I, I did hear enough, I think, for that. So, Mr. House Seal, um, I, may I address your client regarding bond and bond terms? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Ms. Peck, um, I do see this is the first time you've been involved in the criminal justice system, so I want to kind of explain, want to explain the process to you so that you understand how things work. When a person's okay. arrested for a crime or uh, has been charged with a crime, I have a choice to make. I can leave you in the jail. That way I know you're coming to court and I know new things, no, new crimes will take place, mostly. Sometimes right. people still find bad things to do in the jail, but for the most part, people don't commit crimes in jail. But someone that doesn't have any criminal history, uh, I have to make sure of two things. One, that you'll show up when we tell you to, and two, that if I put you back out in the community, it's community safe. 
So I think in this case, no prior criminal history. I think it makes some sense to let you out. I'm going to make you, you don't have to pay any. I could have you put some money up uh, to get out of jail. Then if you mess up, then we keep the money. So that's an incentive. Right. I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'm going to give you a PR bond, which, which means no money. But I'm hearing that alcohol probably is an issue. So I'm going to order no alcohol for the time being, no illegal drugs, no recreational marijuana. I want you to have some alcohol and drug testing to make sure that you're not doing that. I don't want you to have any contact. Sounds like it's a toxic relationship anyway. I don't want you to have any contact with a victim in this case. And that means direct or indirect. So you can't text them. Even if you want to text to say, hey, I'm sorry, none of that. No no texting between the two of you or, or emailing. You don't have any children together, right? So there's no reason to have contact right, or no? Right. Okay. So no contact with him. Um, probably have you meet with some folks to determine if you have some impulse or anger management type thing that... Anger management is kind of an older, older term. The newer term is control, uh, control type things. Figure out how to control your emotions better. And so we may have you do yeah. some counseling in the interim just to make sure that you're under control while you're out. If you follow these rules and regulations, you get to remain out on bond and just show up to court when we tell you to. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. I do. Well, if you mess up and you we find out that you're drinking or we find out you're using. Uh, recreational marijuana or illegal drugs, or you make contact, then I can revoke that bond, and then you end up back in the Midland County Jail, and you get to wear those fine orange outfits that everybody else is wearing in the jail. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Okay. So, at this point in time, the next time you'll need to be in court will be in June 29th. Katrina, what I think I'll have you do, uh, as I'm thinking about this, we need to get a telephone number and email address, but I think it's better if we do that in a private setting. So, I'll have you put yourself in a breakout room with... Uh, the defendant, if you're right with that, Mr. House Seal, rather than saying the uh, telephone number and email uh, over the uh, official court docket. That's fine, Your Honor. Okay. So after we're done, then um, my staff is going to meet with you. We just want to uh, collect a telephone number and email so that we can send you information and that uh, my probation staff can get in contact with you. Okay. All right. Sounds we'll be adjourned good. on this case. Stay right where you are until you get a chance to chat with uh, my staff. And then once they're done, then you're free to you're free to leave. Obviously, the jail's got to release you. So they'll have some paperwork you probably have to sign. Anything else we need to place okay. on the record, Mr. Child Seal? No, Your Honor. Ms. Dusso? No, Your Honor. What will happen next, ma'am, is that your attorney will be in contact with you. That's because that's why we get your telephone number and they'll tell you what the negotiations are. So on June 29th is the next time your case will be here, but your lawyer will just be talking with the prosecutor to see if there's an offer. And then they'll contact you after that. If you just, if we, after that date, then we'll have another court date and you'll be participant. 